afternoon, everyone. I'm Robin Fleck. I currently serve as an ESOL consultant with the Maine Department of Education, and I work with April Perkins. I was an educator for 40 years, and the last 30 years of that time was working with students who are identified as English learners, grades pre-K through 12, and coordinated the English Learner Program for the Auburn School District. I currently serve on the Maine ESOL Advisory Council. Over the years uh, here in Maine, there have been significant changes in the demographics of our student populations within our schools. And I have been privileged to be a part of the growth and change within our state. Today's presentation is about some change, but I hope you will think about this framework as if you were getting a new pair of glasses. This framework will help you to see the language that is already there. It will be easier to plan and assist educators in providing essential tools to serve our multilingual learners well. So this presentation, as you already know, is the rollout of the WIDA English Language Development Standards Framework 2020 edition, um, and currently is written for grades kindergarten through grade 12. Just uh, briefly, our community agreements are please remain muted when not speaking, work to develop community by ensuring your name is properly displayed. And if you wanna change it so that people can see what school district you're from, if they wanna connect with you, that's always helpful. Um, please feel free to ask questions, share resources and contribute to the conversation through the chat. There will be time to respond to your questions and contributions at the end of the presentation. Please respect diversity of opinion and others' perspective, and please be min present and try to minimize distractions. So what is the role of standards? The standards are available to guide the curriculum, okay? Standards are a description of what students should know and be able to do. Standards are not a curriculum. Standards do not tell you how to teach or to assess. So the standards also provide a tool for educators to think about the allocation of resources that they're going to need for instructing their multilingual learners in addition to how assessment will be achieved. And this is a picture of the um, new framework manual and it is almost 400 pages long. Um, it, it is, it, it's, it's quite a chunk of material, but the framework was developed to refresh the existing WIDA ELD standards framework so that it's current with policy and theory and it aligns with academic content standards and disciplinary practices. WIDA wanted to continue to break new ground to advance the field of language development in support of disciplinary learning for students who are culturally and linguistically diverse. This manual is available for free download or it can be purchased through WIDA. I personally like having a card copy to refer to. It's a lot of information and I like being able to pick it up, tab pages, and it, it does come tabbed in the various sections. You'll see that in a minute. Um, so the organization of the edition is section one, talks about the big ideas. We're gonna get into all of these sections in a minute. Section two is understanding the WIDA ELD standards framework. Uh, section three are your grade level cluster materials. Section four is resources. And sec the last piece has the appendices. So it's much more in depth than we've had in the past. So what are the big ideas for 2020? These four big ideas anchor the standards and are interwoven throughout the document. Equity of opportunity and access. And we've all with the pandemic had a chance to see how the equity piece has been a struggle for students across the country. Uh, the integration of content and language. So it's not just that the 
EL teacher is teaching language, but we're going to integrate content and language together and work as a team. So that requires collaboration among your stakeholders with a functional approach to language development. Well, why are these ideas important? Why are these big ideas important? Equity of access and opportunity is essential for multilingual learners preparation for college, career, and civic lives. Multilingual learners develop content and language concurrently. And academic content is the context for language learning. And language is a means for learning academic content. Stakeholders share responsibility for educating multilingual learners and their collaboration is essential. And you're gonna hear that throughout this presentation. A functional approach to language development helps educators focus on the purposeful use of language. These big ideas work together to support the design of standards-based educational experiences that are student-centered, culturally and linguistically sustaining and responsive to multilingual learners' strengths and needs. So here's the framework. The WIDA ELD standards framework consists of four components ranging from broad to narrow in scope. Um, so first you have your WIDA ELD standard statements, the conceptual framing of language and content integration. And you can see how that encompasses everything here, okay? So the components work together um, to make a comprehensive picture of language development. And this figure shows the four components of the framework conceptualized as nested building blocks of language development within sociocultural context. You can see from this graphic the intent to connect language learning to all content areas. So it, after the standard statements, you've got your key language uses, which means your prominent language uses across the disciplines. Then you have your language expectations within that, which are your goals for content-driven language learning. And then you have your proficiency level descriptors sometimes referred to as the PLDs, which is a continuum of language development across six levels. And we're gonna get into each one of these. The five English language development standards remain as the foundation to the system, and they're staying the same. They provide the broadest conceptual framing and illustrate the integration of content and language. The standard statements show language use in the service of learning. In other words, language for thinking and doing. They address the language of schooling. So this new addition re-centers standard one, connecting the personal to the academic. So standard one is a part of every class that a student participates in. So English language development standard one, language for social and instructional purposes. Please note that the word for is in bold type purposefully. Um, and it was put into the statement to make this more of an action, language for demonstrating the purposeful use and meaning of language, language for language arts. Um, and, and that is just a little shift in how the original standards were written, but it was intentional. Your key language uses, and in the world of WIDA, it's referred to as your KLUs, are select genre families that appear across content areas. So you've got narrate, inform, explain, argue. Your KLUs summarize prominent language across disciplines, helping educators organize and coordinate instruction. Four key uses of academic language were introduced in the CANDU descriptors, Key Uses Edition 2016, and they were recount, explain, argue, and discuss. Four years later, as part of this development of the 2020 edition, 
WIDA researchers analyze the latest academic content standards, research literature and disciplinary practices and felt a need to update their approach. So WIDA has now identified four key language uses that appear across all content areas and that teachers can use to prioritize and organize the integration of content and language. And again, those are narrate, inform, explain, argue. That's a critical piece of um, what happens here. Language expectations are goals for content-driven language instruction, adding specific Oh, I have a hard time with this word, specificity to the ELD standard statements and key language uses. They are the statements most similar to what educators generally find in academic content standards. The 2020 edition provides language expectations for all grade level clusters. Language expectations are derived from the academic content standards and they describe the language necessary for meeting grade level academic content standards. Language expectations are built around a set of language functions. As part of the 2020 edition's mission to increase accessibility options for students and emphasize multimodal forms of communication, language expectations are articulated in two expanded communication modes. Interpretive, which means listening, reading, and viewing, and expressive, speaking, writing, and representing. These communication modes highlight that students communicate through listening, speaking, reading, and writing, but they also communicate through gestures, facial expressions, images, equations, maps, symbols, and other means. Multimodal communication does not only provide support for developing language, but rather it's an essential path for all students to make meaning. This move to use interpretive and expressive communication modes is further intended to remind educators that students must be offered multiple means to engage. So for those of you that are familiar with the, um, the state standards, you can see how they've written this out to look similar. So your ELD standard is first, and then the LA stands for language arts. You next have your two, three, grade two, three grade level cluster. Your key language use is narrate and the mode of communication is expressive. So this multilingual learners construct language arts narratives that, and then it lists orient audience to context and so forth. So that is something that um, is new in this edition. And your proficiency level descriptors are a detailed articulation of student language performance across six levels of English language proficiency. And each end of language descriptor includes and builds on previous levels. So when you look at these and you see a descriptor of what a student should be able to do in uh, grade one, uh, at a proficiency level three, you're going to know that what you see also includes level one and level two. Okay, so it includes the previous levels. The, profi the proficiency level descriptors are otherwise known as PLDs are aligned to the six grade level clusters that are used in the access testing online. And those grade level clusters are kindergarten, first grade, then second and third grade are a cluster, four, five is a cluster, grade six to eight is a cluster, and then nine, 12. Proficiency level six is open-ended. It indicates that for all of us, language development continues throughout life. Each end of level descriptor, again, builds on the previous proficiency levels. And for ease of representation and understanding, the PLDs describe proficiency in a linear way However, language development isn't a straightforward progression across proficiency levels. And the way any one individual develops language depends on a variety of factors, including their familiarity with the topic, audience, situation, 
Um, so therefore, multilingual learners may take various paths to develop and reach language expectations. At any given point in their language development, multilingual learners may demonstrate a range of abilities within and across each proficiency level. So it's very important for educators to look at all the scores and not just um, the composite score. The PLDs supply clear targets for language learning that educators can integrate into their curriculum planning for students of all ages and stages of language development. This in turn can inform the choice of appropriate scaffolds as educators consider the ways in which students may use language to meet the language expectations of a unit and plan for how to assist them in applying increasingly precise and complex language to meet those expectations. Educators should scaffold learning and resources across all levels of language proficiency so that a teacher knows where their students are in their classroom when they're planning their science unit and they can have appropriate supports and scaffolds for the students at all the different proficiency levels and also have um, performance tests that would be appropriate. So we talked about this fact that the um, materials are organized into the six uh, grade level clusters that correspond to the access. And WIDA recognizes that English language development occurs over multiple years, is variable and depends on many factors, such as multilingual learners' ages, maturation, classroom experiences, motivation, attitudes, types of educational program, prior um, educational schooling, and with this in mind, they developed the uh, six grade level clusters that I previously mentioned, kindergarten, first, grades two, three, grades four, five, grades six, eight, and nine, 12. And within each grade level cluster section, the materials are organized according to the components of the ELD standards framework. And they include some additional resources in that section. The grade level cluster materials help educators enact the WIDA ELD standards framework. Okay, and once again, we don't want you to know that there isn't any change between the access testing and uh, the material that is within the grade level clusters. That has not changed. Some of the supplemental resources are annotated language samples that illustrate the standards framework in authentic grade level texts. Uh, key language uses gives you a closer look. They give you extended definitions and examples for each key language use. They're really quite well done. Um, there are examples of collaborative planning for content and language integration and gives some samples of jump off points for curricular conversations. So it gives examples of how to um, do this in a practical, real school situation. So from 2012 to the 2020 edition, what is staying the same? Uh, the can-do philosophy, which emphasizes the assets and potential of multilingual learners, although the can-do philosophy statements have not been updated in the 2020 edition. Um, the WIDA ELD standard statements are staying the same except for that slight change of the word for. We continue to have six levels of language proficiency and six grade level clusters. Um, so since its inception in 2003, WIDA's can-do philosophy has been its mantra and has underscored in its four editions of English language development standards released in 2004, 2007, 2012, and 2020. The editions of the standards have evolved over time to remain current with research, theory, policy, practice, and the demands of academic content standards. Even as editions continue to evolve throughout the years, WIDA has remained steadfast in its commitment to equitable 
educational opportunities for multilingual learners as exemplified in its standards, documents, and resources. Um, the, as I said, the CANDUs are not updated in the 2020 edition, and educators do need to remember that the CANDU statements are not meant to be goals and objectives, but are indicators of what students can do at the varying proficiency levels. So what is updated and new? Um, so it's the, they've been reorganized into four components. There are now more inclusive modes of communication, the interpretive and expressive. Uh, the grade level cluster materials are much more fleshed out. And the um, examples of how to have those uh, collaborative conversations, co-curricular conversations that are in there we've never had before. Um, so an example of that um, could be that the ELD standard is science. The key language use would be to explain. Uh, the language expectation could be interpret and construct scientific explanations. The language functions would be to describe valid and reliable evidence for sources about a phenomenon through, and then whatever the activity was. Language features, um, you might have to teach about abstract nouns or a variety of way to describe a phenomenon which might involve using relative clauses or declarative statements. Um, cohesion to reference ideas and information about text relating verb groups to state relationships. So within your manual, it really outlines in quite depth how this can be put together. And it gives you an outline to work with colleagues who this might be new for. If you're, you're collaborating with a content teacher, um, this can be you know, something totally different. And the manual gives a nice way to go through it with someone that isn't um, difficult to understand. Okay, so as I said, educator collaboration is key to this. And I'm gonna show you a little video clip, fingers crossed that this all works, um, from the self-paced uh, e-workshop that um, Weeder offers about the standard. It's just a little three minute clip and let's everybody keep their fingers crossed that technology works. Oh, I think it's going to work. I work directly with multilingual learners. I use the WIDA ELD standards framework to help understand how to set language expectations during content learning. In my classroom, one thing I've been thinking about is how we can use the ELD standards framework to create more equity for all learners. I want our multilingual learners to be treated as valuable and knowledgeable members of our learning community. I need to be able to decide which language uses need extra attention to develop practice opportunities for students. You might share my perspective if you also work directly with multilingual learners. I work with educators to support their learning. I use the ELD standards framework to provide professional learning related to language development and multilingual learners. I've been concentrating on um, bridging language and content instruction during planning conversations with um, teams of teachers at my school. I'm wondering how the ELD standards framework can support planning conversations between content and language teachers um, as they collaborate around the multilingual learners they share. You might share my perspective if you also work with teachers to support their learning and collaboration. I work 
to create school-wide or district-wide systems. I engage others in planning supportive systems for instruction, curriculum, and assessment. I use ELD standards framework to advocate for school-wide engagement in supporting multilingual learners in order to increase equitable opportunities to learn. We have been focusing more on reaching the needs of our multilingual learners. We want to ensure that all learners are meeting content standards while also developing the language necessary to reach those standards. I wonder how to use the ELD standards framework to promote equity school-wide and district-wide for multilingual learners. You might share my perspective if you're also thinking about how the WIDA ELD standards framework might support your work in shifting the mindset about multilingual learners to asset-based thinking. I work to communicate with families and communities to support the academic achievement and well-being of multilingual learners in our schools and classrooms. I use the ELD standards framework to support families' advocacy for equity and opportunity to learn for their children. I field a lot of questions from families and community organizations. I'd love to know more about how to speak to families and how families can use this framework to support their children. You might share my perspective if you're also thinking about how this framework might support your work in communicating and forging partnerships with families and communities. So I'm going to uh, get back to my uh, PowerPoint presentation. Um, it's just gonna take a second to make that happen. Um, if we were in person, I would ask you to turn and you know, speak with the people around you about um, you know, what did you relate to with what the um, four people just shared in that little video clip? And who might be the first person that you would think about uh, collaborating with or who are the people that you wanna contact first as you get into the framework? And who, just think about that for a minute. And I'm gonna get us back to the presentation, hopefully. Okay. April, am I there? Yep, you are. Great. Oh, I'm so excited for myself. <laughs> okay, so our next steps um, in, in this uh, slide is really just talking about um, how to access uh, the um, information. You can download this from the WIDA website. Uh, you can order, purchase the book from the WIDA bookstore. I think it's about $30. Uh, and there are many um, professional resources there. Uh, there's a, a Q&A uh, webinar series flyer. Um, there are several professional learning uh, opportunities. And I'm gonna talk about some of those in more depth, but um, one of them is called the WIDA Virtual Institute. And you need to know that that was designed to be used um, internationally and that one um, is not free. There, there are plenty of options for you that are available to you for free. Um, <clears throat> so I have listed here this particular um, WIDA Focus Bulletin. Um, that's on the site on collaboration um, it is really well done. And I think it would be great for you to take a look at and, and use it in conversations with um, building administrators, perhaps even district administrators, um, your curriculum planning people. Um, I think this is a really great article. One wonderful opportunity that we have coming up is uh, two, um, two workshops that go together on June 9th and June 16th of this year. 
from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. And they are a set. So you need, if you're gonna do this, you need to plan to attend both of them. And they're presented by WIDA staff. They're at no cost, sponsored through the DOE. Uh, there is a 40 uh, participant maximum and there is a registration link here. And um, I know that April has also put that registration link out on our um, ESOL, uh, you know, the website and it's under uh, professional learning opportunities on the DOE website. April, is there any place else we can find that? Um, it's also in the weekly newsletter, but I'm grabbing the link right now to put into the chat as well if any of you would like to register right away before you forget. So give me just a moment and that will be in the chat too. Great. All right, and we would like to hear from you about your ideas for learning and beginning to implement uh, these standards. Um, so again, this is just a list that so when you, you know, get the um, information, you can see it again. I'm sure you can't write fast enough to put it all down, but I just made a list of um, the key web pages and links. They're here, but um, all of these are coming from the WIDA website. So if you go there and explore, you, you will see them. Uh, this WIDA e-learning center self-paced e-workshop. Um, I did that e-workshop and I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's very well done and main educators can take advantage of this training through the secure portal on the WIDA website. To get a secure portal account, you must have a main public school email address and contact WIDA client services for help if you need help with that. The learning outcomes for the course are to identify the purpose and function of the components of the WIDA ELD standards framework and describe ways to use the components of the WIDA ELD standards framework. So this is another opportunity and it's really designed to be used um, with your colleagues and peers. And I know that uh, some of our teachers um, are what I call lone rangers. <laughs> they, they don't have anyone else in their department with them. And so if you're interested in being part of a professional learning community to work through the EE workshop together, we could you know, potentially do that virtually. So you know, people would do a module and then we would make a date to come together. And if there's anyone interested in doing that who would also be interested in being a teacher leader facilitator, um, please email me, my email address is here. Um, and there would be contact hours available if that were to happen. So that's another option. I mean, certainly we have the June 9th and the June 16th and we have this um, self-paced e-workshop. I will tell you, I know that not everybody um, is a fan of animation. Uh, the e, uh, the self-paced e-workshop course is not all animation. There, each module um, does keep those same uh, characters that I showed you and, and there's like one segment with them, but you see real people, real teachers talking about what they're doing, what their experiences are, um, teachers who piloted the standards and worked with them. Um, so I, I just put that out there for those of you that are not animation fans. Um, we encourage you to join um, the main DOE language educators virtual office hours for discussions. We've had some really great ones this year. We've been meeting on Wednesdays at three and we have to stay tuned to see what's coming up for next year. But we plan to have discussions on the WIDA ELD standards and other topics um, coming in the future. So if you're not already a part of the DOE ESOL educators listserv, um, please, uh, you know, do get your name on that list. So April puts out a newsletter, a language newsletter, usually every Friday, and she puts the latest information there. And then lastly, is your district offering any professional learning on the WIDA ELD standards? Do you know of any plans? And if so, would your district be willing to invite educators from other districts to participate? So I'm thinking of, you know, if you have a neighboring district where 
there is just one teacher there. Is that one or two teachers? Would you be willing to invite them and include them to share with you so that they have um, more peers and colleagues to process this information with? It is a lot of information and it's going to take time. This is not something that you're going to be able to just even take in a day. And even if you devoted a whole day to it and be able to implement it, you have to really digest it, use it, practice it, discuss it, refine it, adjust, check and adjust, and then go on to the next piece. And so people really need to work together to, and support one another in this process. It is the expectation that Maine educators will become familiar with the 2020 standards framework in the upcoming 21-22 school year. And I just can't emphasize enough that the full implementation requires teacher collaboration. And there will need to be planning within each district regarding how and when that collaboration process will occur. And hopefully as districts are designing you know, their plan for professional development for the upcoming school year, this will be a part of what gets put into um, that plan. And it will transfer down to a building-based uh, approach or perhaps a district-based approach and low incidence district. And this is something that is not just for ESOL teachers. This, this is for all teachers. Um, so, and we know things have to start small, but, and maybe it starts with, you know, one teacher working with a grade level team or one teacher working with a department and has to expand from there. And you know, your staff and the people that you work with, um, you know, who are some people that you would be comfortable to, you know, try this out with and start with and, and then branch out from there. Everybody knows what's going to work best in their district. And lastly, um, if you have questions or comments after this, please feel free to contact April Perkins or myself. Your thoughts and ideas are so important and valuable to us as we move into the next phase of introducing and implementing the WEGA 2020 standards framework into our schools and our classrooms. I wanna thank everybody for being here today. We are gonna, I can't see the chat just yet. We'll look and see if there are questions, but I wanna thank you for being here today. I wanna to thank you for your dedication to all the students that you work with in your school community and the extraordinary efforts that you put in all the time, but particularly this last year has been beyond what any of you could possibly have imagined. 14 months ago, and it doesn't go unnoticed and unappreciated the work that you do. And I hope that you'll complete the survey um, that was with the link to get on the Zoom in order to help us know what worked well and um, constructive feedback for future presentations. Thank you. Do we have any questions, April? I don't believe there are any questions in the chat. Let me just make sure. Can I ask um, a question? Yep, Heather, go ahead. Sure. Okay, thanks. So I noticed on one of the slides that said it was the expectation for these standards to be uh, shared next year. Um, is there any support or push from the DOE um, because I would love to share these more. I've shared them limited to people who are interested, but I don't really feel like my district is inviting me to sh share with people. And I don't know if there's gonna be a push for that. April, do you wanna take that one? I want to make sure that I've understood your question, Heather, um, as far as what the DOE can provide. Are you talking about trainings and resources through us regarding the standards or did I miss the point? No. No, um, the the um, the district feeling the urgency that this should be done, or rather than rather than um, rather than I don't want to deal with it. Yeah, 
I'm always happy to put out communications that might be helpful. So if, for example, a priority notice um, that would go to school and, and uh, district leaders would be helpful, I'm more than happy to put that together. Yes, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. thank you. Yep. And I see we have a question. Um, can mainstream teachers get access to the secure portal? And, and the, answer is, the answer is yes. Yes, right. Any person who has a main SAU or school administrative unit email address can have a WIDA secure portal account. So that's open to all educators. And I, um, I would really love if more mainstream teachers were taking advantage of that. There are some wonderful free um, e-workshops in there, both on the standards and lots of other topics related to ESOL that can provide a really good foundation for mainstream educators. So if you know someone who doesn't have a secure portal account and would like to get one, um, the way to do that is just to contact WIDA Client Services and they can set you up. And there are credit hour certificates that are offered through WIDA upon completion of that course. Any other questions, thoughts, comments? Uh, oh, what is considered a low incidence district? We don't have a definition of that term necessarily. We, we, when we reference low incidence districts, we gener generally are just referring to those who may have um, relatively smaller EL populations to our eight major EL districts. Um, but there isn't an official definition of that. Well, thank you, everybody. I hope that uh, you were able to get a little bit of a picture of this. Like I said, it's it, it's it's a lot of information, and I I don't want to mislead you to think that you can just open up this manual and spend a small bit of time with it and uh, be able to use it in full right away. Um, I'm afraid if you have that outlook on it, it will end up just sitting on a bookshelf because you'll become frustrated and you won't get the benefit from it that was fully intended. Um, so I think that maybe one of the biggest challenges is going to get the buy-in from um, the, the districts and the building administrators to support you with what you need to have the professional development and the time to spend with this with your colleagues and also emphasizing that collaboration piece. And we all know that you have to have time to do that. Um, so again, April sending out a priority notice and us finding ways to share this information um, with people um, we hope will support you. And if you think of other ways, um, like what Heather shared with us, if there are other ways that um, you would like some support, reach out to April and I and we'll see what we can do. Okay, thank um, you. I, just very quickly, I'm recalling that there was actually a main DOE newsroom article that went out recently about the standards. So that would be a good thing to pass along to your administrators if they haven't already seen it. I'm Trying to grab the link for that, um, but it's taking me just. And I just want to say it's nice to see uh, all the new friends here today and uh, Maybe next year we'll all be able to be in a room together and uh, see one another and uh, catch up a little bit. All right, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your afternoon sessions. We'll see you over there. <laughs>